Welcome to the first episode of a brand new Code America series, T Cortex Connected. Formally, I was going to call it TV Unfiltered, but then I thought of something cooler to call it. This show will explore different TV shows and the many fantasies, questions, and a analytical problems, failures, successes of current, past, and even future TV shows. For this, the very first of these episodes, instead of analyzing a TV show's failure or success, I instead will give you a kind of fantasy scenario. Inside the world of my new favorite obsession. Now, I will admit, when I first did, did the process of revealing My Little Pony Friendship's Magic, I had no intention of becoming a fan. But, over time, I did. Because of the show's stellar stellar writing, great animation style, and somewhat thought-provoking thoughts on simple friendship social issues. But, as I said in my review, go into the Catech Reviews folder of my playlist to see it, the show's not perfect, and one of its immediate Frailties is in its lore. Between the princesses of of Celestia and Luna. While Celestia gets a giant ton of screen screen time in this series, Princess Luna is relegated off to the side like yesterday's trash, only given one episode of proper screen screen time past the original pilot's arc and then subsequently sprinkled into only two other episodes for a combined time on screen of about 17 minutes. This has led a cavalcade, a cavalcade of brony fans, male fans of My Little Pony, and the general fan community of the show show to wonder wonder if Celestia is all that useful. After all, you've seen the internet memes from from the world's greatest troll to many angry brony fans complaining about her constant trolling and need to test which begs the question if given the chance for an overthrow, would the people of Equestria actually overthrow her? My reasoning is yes. And this is where the fantasy comes in, folks. I've thought of an entire plot line that would take an entire three episodes to accomplish about the threat of a lunar revolution and the possible fall of Celestia from graceful sun pony to just another one and why this arc would be critical to character examination to filling in the blanks and ultimately to give an arc so gambling, so risky, that might just change the perception of the show itself. Now, pay attention. The arc simply starts like this. You normally would see Celestia go through a normal, ordinary day of pra practically filling out paperwork and hardly doing anything. In, 
in the effort effort a bunch of concerned citizens would come come filling in their concerns concerns of the day. Celestia being too busy with it throws them off. And and practically continues about her business. But these two ponies would be cr critical because these two ponies would express their unrest with with the ruler of Equestria. Now, to give you a little bit bit of the show's precurrence, they treat the term princess in MLP as a totally different angle, not what it is dictionary defined as the incumbent or possible ruler in substitution of a kingdom. So take that in mind because I'm using the actual dictionary definition of the term. After repeated occurrences and lack of public public appearance combined with the many recounts of the of the times that Celestia could have saved saved the kingdom from from discord or even personally dealt a hand in the fall of her sister as Nightmare Moon, the townspeople start to question Celestia's judgment and even worse whether whether she should rule at all. This causes a conflict and a divide among the t town of Ponyville, but ultimately spreads throughout throughout the five sectors, even reaching even reaching the Crystal Empire and Canterlot. This creates a pro Celestia, pro Luna side in which the main characters would have to intervene trying to be the mediators of them of the two situations the main six or as I like to call them the harmony six try to come to terms with both sides but ultimately even between themselves end up caught in the conflict and end up choosing Sides. Twilight and rare, Rarity choosing Celestia's side, while the others, while while Rainbow Dash decide decides to be pro Luna, thus thus breaking Fluttershy in, and the and the one that would be kind of isolated and neutral in this argument would be Applejack. The reasons why are simple. With Applejack being being the neutral party, this also gives us a chance to re-examine Applejack in a deeper context. You see, most of her basic context has been fleshed out early. Thank you, Brony Curious for your excellent video on why why Applejack gets no love around here. Here is preface it for this. Also also with the two sides be being divided, it also shows that even the social divide of this problem even gets into the normally unbreakable unbreakable, unshakable friendship of the main characters. When Celestia is rumor, of course, taking the passive route, she decides to ignore the problem com completely, while when Luna is more interested in finding out why. Why people have decided to rule her for her specifically. She decides, much like in Luna Eclipse, to go to visit Ponyville personally to find find out what's causing these 
social arguments bring up things like the fact that she used to control the moon and be a viable part part of Equestria's every day. Since since she lost that a thousand years ago, thanks to the elements of harmony and celestia, she's been practically used as a PR swap. Of course, of course, the pro celestians would argue, argue their point. While other members of the main six on both sides would also argue their reasons for Celestia staying there, i.e. mostly Twilight doing the speaking and Luna getting control, i.e. Rainbow Dash mainly doing the speaking through some of her heroic boasts and even giving some of both characters negatives. Both arguments coming from both sides would allow both Celestia and Luna to re recant their rivalry that was just brought up just solely in the intro. This this would allow for some background and some depth depth in the two godlike alicorn beans and also give you some depth into their character something that is much needed seeing that even even gods don't aren't expressed skin deep but also the divide would also leave for a small little bit of character expose between the relationship between Twilight Sparkle and Celestia herself, seeing that we're given the impression that they're extremely close for teacher and student. But this conflict would even cause Twilight to question, question her moral ground as a supporter of Celestia. Looking back on previous episodes, so as a reason for the rethinking her constant test and the fact that she's not so sociable. All these problems would lead to an un to an ultimate showdown in Canterlot, where the where the ang angry Luna citizens are getting ready to do something about it while the pro-Celestians are ready to stand at their prince's defense. It is only in this moment before everything breaks down in the total chaos, chaos that the main six would come together, naturally, in harmony and quell the two sides. A natural agreement would be met Met and Luna would be restored her former position, but she would take a more public approach. Approach the matters matters involving the night. While Celestia would maintain her role during the day and handle the day to day operations in the castle. A plot line like this, and yes, there would even be one or two songs would be an interesting side skirt. See, seeing that all the friendship lessons at the core of the show are actually, if you probe it deep enough, viable social issues that need to be addressed. The fact of building Celestia's character as a more believable person in Control would be the critical part of this arc, and giving giving Luna more reason for screen time and a more plausible role in the series. But also, but also it would delve delve into the social issues that often divide kingdoms and end up bringing them down, 
and showing the strength of a, of Canterlot as a kingdom kingdom by coming to an agreement o over something as divisive as who should rule would also teach teach kids the value of understanding both sides and even reaching across the, across the hall with people with people you don't know to find out points of points of view to better help the greater populace and make a social impact. Sometimes cartoons need to take diverse and risky angles such such as these these to teach kids viable viable lessons that will help them in social life much like all the lessons in Friendship is Magic do. do. But writers are afraid, afraid to take a social stance in, in the ability to educate. Which, that's strangely what Friendship is Magic is all about. Education. Through, through simple lessons about the learnings of friendship, you can learn learn about social acceptance and even personal acceptance as well as what you're meant to do do are understanding a person's faults a thing like a lunar revolution has often been depicted in fan fictions fan fictions as a bloody bit of warfare but you don't need to go as far to express this. A simple, an angle such as this would show a surprising amount, amount of depth for the writers, writers of Friendship is Magic, and also, also show that it can tackle, tackle an issue like the political unrest in this country among others in a simple, more digestible manner. It is, through, it is through taking stabs and taking gambles that often TV shows show their best and finer moments. This is, this is often most expressed through the TV series MASH, but there have been a few kids shows that have gone beyond the bar and really showed something something not only thought provoking but entertaining as well. Which I think Friendship is Magic would be more than capable of pulling an episode such like this off in their clever brand of well timed humor, good pop points, and even musical song. But also, this would open up other possible arcs, especially, especially with Applejack, with her being neutral and her friends being divided, and even her family divided. This would give her a chance through through certain scenes in the episode to go soul searching a bit. To maybe find a new goal in life, and to break break the proverbial writer's block on how to expand Applejack's character further than we already know. Although this would be a very dark arc on the surface, the lighthearted lesson at the end is the point. To understand, stand to have the medium, and to sometimes understand that some problems need to be quelled personally. I would also follow this up with a more action-based episode that would show show Celestia getting more assertive towards handling a physical threat to show to show that the lesson from from this episode would be learned. So now I ask you, would you embrace my idea and love love to see it actual actual 
actually proposed to the writers and given a shot on the show. And, since we're playing a little bit of role play, what side would you take if Equestria was divided in two? And also, leave comments on other TV shows that you would love for me to thoroughly analyze a particular episode, fault of the series, series, or anything that might spark my interest. For the next episode, I'm going to delve into the Cleveland show and explain why, with its recent cancellation, the Cleveland show failed and why TV in, in large has had, had a failure time in spinning off otherwise successful ideas. Until, until the next Code America video, I'm Leo Line 59 Live life by the code.